Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fireside chat today about Freedom Farms. We're so excited to have you here. My name is Lisa Levinson. I'm the Campaigns Director for In Defense of Animals. And today, we're going to have a very special program for you. We are actually going to introduce you to our new sanctuary in Central California called Freedom Farms. And the perfect person to introduce you to the sanctuary is our president, Dr. Marilyn Kroplick. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Hi, Hi everybody. Yeah. Should I start? Oh yeah, we're just thrilled to have you. Just wanted to um, take a moment and uh, introduce some of our IDA folks who are here. Oh, okay. I'm going to add Bob, who's our development director. Hello. Hello. And also add Mary. Hey, Mary. So if Hi. you're chatting, you'll know who is chatting with you and that's kind of a fun thing. Um, and now we're going to go back to Marilyn and she's going to share her experience and also the start of Freedom Farms. We may do a little um, side presentation for you, if that's okay. If you don't mind, we'll go ahead and um, I'm going to share the screen. Okay. And get a little slideshow for you going. We're going to get some pictures. Yes, yes, we'll have some pictures up in just a moment. Let me actually first uh, do one other thing before we do that. Get this set up for you, Marilyn. So, all right, so hopefully we will have this in just a moment and see, getting the the right thing on the screen there for you, and then getting it set up properly. Okie dokie. So here we go. So thanks to everybody for your patience. I'm going to get the slideshow going and we'll have it ready for Marilyn who is going to Tell us a little bit about what she knows. Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. You're welcome. Um, I've been always dreaming of creating a place that addresses the crises that we as human beings are facing now and in the future. And one day, Marin Transit came over to our building and said, have you thought of selling your buildings? <laughs> And I said, um, not really. I played hard to get, you know, not really. Uh, and he said, well, we're interested in buying it. And we had two buildings in Marin County. So then I said, wow, maybe this could be my dream actualizing my vegan center dream. And I said, whoa, okay, I'll follow this. So I negotiated a very good, you know, price and uh, I sold it to them. But then I had to, if anyone knows about 1031 exchange, I had to figure out um, three, I had to identify three properties within 45 days, I think it was. And it's sort of like the last day, you know, where I still haven't found the perfect, and I wouldn't say perfect because I don't believe in perfect, but the good enough property. I, I, I didn't quite feel like I had it yet. So I, I just, like I usually do when I'm in that kind of state and there's sort of a crisis, I just take a deep breath in and then I open my eyes and then I see this farm, <laughs> you know, uh, this, this 44 acre farm being sold by Debbie Reynolds and, uh, and Carrie Fishers and Todd Fishers. That was their compound. Uh, and they owned it for 30 years. And it, it had animals. I said, oh, wait, this must be, I have to follow this with my nose. And so I went to uh, the next day, I met with Todd and it was just glorious. Um, we 
hit it off. Um, I told him that, you know, I'm a psychiatrist, some interest in mental health, and the um, De uh, Debbie Reynolds and Carrie Fisher, they were interested in mental health. Car Debbie Reynolds was the president of Thallions for 50 years, uh, which is a um, celebrity arm to raise multi-million dollars for um, mental health programs. And they put on, actually they built a wing at Cedar sinai And then I, I was also interested in animals and you know, it has so happened that Carrie Fisher had a service dog and um, who's very popular on the internet. So I got excited. I felt like, oh boy, this is a little overwhelming. First of all, there were things to figure out like with the cattle, they had like 20 head of cattle or something like that. And I said, I, I want the cattle with the property you know, and I convinced him to give us the, donate the cattle to us. And there was a horse and a donkey and there's peacocks everywhere around, beautiful peacocks. There's, there's one, that's, that's pretty boy. <laughs> the men are the, are the pretty ones, of course, in the peacock family. And, you know, they, they just love to show their feathers and look at themselves in the window, you know, and, um, and attract the girls who are actually quite drab. <laughs> but um, so then uh, I was on my way, I guess. I felt like, um, I think this this is what I was dreaming of, you know, I'm going to go with this. And I wanted a place of education. Oh, and that, that is Eora, who's a female donkey. I thought she, she was, she was called Eeyore before, but then I found out she was female, so I named her Eora. And I wanted a place of education and a place of transformation for animals, people, and the environment. Um, so many, so much of us, so many of us can have trouble accepting trauma within. And I wanted a safe place for people to be able to experience and think about and, act, and visualize maybe the trauma and integrate it into, the, into their lives rather than having it dissociated and not thought about. Certainly the animals have had trauma, but so have the humans. We as human beings experience a lot of trauma in our lives. And usually a lot of times we don't know how to deal with it and we do numb ourselves out. So it's a place that where our disconnected self, our disconnected brain can reconnect. And, and it's based on a sanctuary model by Sandra Bloom, who's a psychiatrist. Um, Freedom Farms is based on that, psych that sanctuary model. And it's there to help humans and non-humans and to buy the space the safety, the support, and to redirect our lives, to rethink our lives, to maybe have a new life, a new opening. And so there, and, and it's all around some of the problems, the crises that we face as humans, as humans such as chronic illness, uh, war, um, you know, uh, violence, uh, you know, climate change, conflict, how we re don't resolve conflict very well. So it's a healing place for humans and for animals. And uh, where different, uh, I, I, I see it as opening up uh, people, making the connection for people between their diet and chronic illness, their diet and some maybe some things they've never thought about before, like the slaughter of animals on their plate, um, nutrition, if you know, try, trying to help people transition to a plant based diet, um, maybe a cooking school where we can experiment and cook, where we can dance, have fun, do yoga, do meditation. And, you know, learn about permaculture as well. 
So, and learn about our own trauma. Oh, that was a trauma. It rained there for about three, oh, it was a heavy rain and we had all these sinkholes. <laughs> so um, that came as a surprise. Usually there isn't that much rain, but that was last year. So, you know, if we're to survive, you know, as a, as a species, we need to, we need to recognize that a lot of the things we've been taught are not, are not accurate. Um, the food that we're eating, the food that we're eating, the, um, the way we treat each other, the way we block ourselves from realizing when we feel hurt. Uh, so I want people to remember trauma um, and to share in this vision of what does not exist, but, but what could exist for ourselves, a, a happier, healthier, uh, more sustainable future because we can't keep going like we are going. We need, uh, we need to make a dramatic shift. And if I can just be a part of that, just a little bit in building bridges and healing, healing splits and teaching skills that for so long we have not paid attention to, or we didn't know about, or we feel like uh, we don't have time to think about this. Um, and, you know, to also bring to people's attention that this Cartesian split really stems from the 1500s, especially with animals, stems from Descartes where he was, he, he, he said, animals were like machines and humans, you know, they, they, they're the real deal, you know? And we still, our society still uh, acts as if it's all true. And we know it's not true, <laughs> you know, just because they can't speak our language doesn't mean they're machines. So we're facing a lot of our laws, our legal, our legal laws, our, our every, uh, you know, our whole lives are being run and to some extent by this mistruth. And um, so to realize that it goes way, way back and it's very embedded in our culture and it's going to take a lot of people to take the risk and take the leap. We must find meaning in our lives, purpose and spirituality and go back into the world of science and really uh, not, you know, science and not just a fictitious uh, philosophy that has been governing our legal system and our food choices and our health. So that each one can begin to describe their own new vision for themselves and it's one of emerging wholeness and also standing up for what you discover in your lifetime and making, um, and making a contribution to the rest of the world by helping other people do the same, you know, and we don't do it by, you know, telling them they've got to think this way, you know? So part of what I try to teach also is how to meet somebody where they're at, you know, if somebody, uh, you know, and how to deal with conflict when somebody doesn't want to listen to you. And that's been the, uh, the theme that I've, I've put into use to create a very harmonious environment at IDA. And doesn't mean you don't stand up to, uh, to, uh, to anger or face it. But you 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 control you know how to control your emotions in order to get the best result for your goal, and um, so those are the kinds of things I want to you know want to teach people there and to have a lot of fun. Let's let you know we we work so hard in this animal rights we really kind of forget sometimes 
that we need to have just plain old fun, you know? Let's go out and, uh, you know, let's go out and feed, feed the, uh, the, the cows their, their kick, you know, or, uh, you know, watch a movie or swim in the swimming pool. It's a beautiful place. It, it's got a 7,800 square foot main house. And um, everything from the celebrity era, from the Debbie Reynolds era and Carrie Fisher, all the furniture is the same furniture. It, it came with the house. And uh, all the memorabilia is still there. And uh, so you're just entering like another world, you know, of how this family lived. It's quite an experience. And then there's also a 10,000 square foot um, production facilities where uh, Todd was hoping to uh, do some film uh, productions there, which actually didn't turn out, but uh, to do. He, uh, and so, but I, but it's all set up for film productions. And we, we are allowed to do it because we're a nonprofit and it's an agricultural zoning. So we could do something on, on animals there. And there's a sound studio and there's a screening room and uh, there's beautiful fireplace and it's all wood. And you know, you have to, you have to really see it inside too. It's really nice. Do you have any pictures inside? Lisa? No? No, these oh, are the well. ones, the best yeah. of them. <laughs> you can always look it up. It's uh, It's been advertised in, on people, in, it was in People Magazine and and it's, you know, you can do, use it on the internet. Um, but I mean, just use the internet, uh, you know, say uh, Debbie Reynolds compound in Creston. It's in Creston. And Creston is a, a beautiful little place. I mean, it's not little, it's actually, well, it is little because the town only has four buildings in the town, four or five. One's a restaurant and another one is, you know, uh, like a little country store. And it's very ca uh, cow cowboys, it's cowboys and wineries. So all around you see these beautiful rolling hills of wineries. It's called Central California Coastal. And so uh, it's, it's a different culture. It's about 10 miles outside of Paso Robles. So we, I'd like to have workshops there and, you know, just, and, and different kinds of animals. I just completed a, a four month course in running a sanctuary. So we're looking to open up the sanctuary now. We we do have animals right now that we're caring for. So if you um, have an animal that needs help, let me know. And, um, but it, I really believe that we really, as humans, we have to be willing to open our minds to the, the tragedies within ourselves that are hard to face so that we can progress and learn from them and not be so caught up in knots, so stressed out. Sometimes we don't even realize it, it's in our unconscious, but it shows up in that we, our life doesn't progress as smoothly and as fluidly as we would like. And so uh, it's, and also, being aware, all the meat eaters, that what they're eating is a, a dead sentient being that is suffered. And there's, you know, and I, I you know, I speak for myself. I, when I was, uh, you know, before when I wasn't vegan, I knew there was something wrong. I really, I knew it, you know, it's got to be, it's either not healthy for me, having these bologna sandwiches that my mother used to give me, uh, or, or the, in, that, in those days they had white bread, you know, you, it's, you think of it as purity, but actually it doesn't have any nutrients in it. And so I, I knew that I had to make a change, but I didn't know how. 
I didn't know how. Now I've tried to be a vegan uh, and a vegetarian when I was, in, when I tried to be a vegetarian in my twenties. Um, but all I ended up doing was turning orange because I ate so many carrots. And so I thought I had hepatitis and I went to the doctor and he said, you have carotenia or something like that. Um, so it wasn't until I really was far into IDA, I realized this is not a quick fix becoming vegan. This is something that you've got to be compassionate with yourself about and find your own way. And just because someone does it one way doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. So I was trying to think, okay, what would work for me? And all I could think of is cheesecake, vegan cheesecake. <laughs> and I loved vegan cheesecake. I had had it one time before. And so I said, Marilyn, you can't just dream about it. Tonight, you're gonna to go and get the ingredients and you're gonna make it. And I looked it up and everything like that. And then I had a few other rules that I could eat as much as I want for as long as I want. And I didn't have to switch to grains or anything else because that was intimidating. And, and after about three months of eating cheesecake every <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I said, okay, now I want to travel. Let's go to Ethiopia and try some Ethiopian food. And that's how finding the motivation within yourself is so important your own personal motivation, why you want to do this. Is it for, it doesn't only have to be for animals, which uh, I know that there are some strict vegans that think it should only be ethical veganism. But I believe that people come to uh, veganism in their own personal way. And that you need to, uh, and you need to find that personal way that will work for you instead of just doing it for a week and then going off the wagon again. So, uh, so I, that's what I recommend, and uh, that's what I did. So, but you have to learn how to cook too, and that's why cooking school, you know, a vegan cooking classes would be uh, there, uh, yeah, in the in the in the sanctuary, and um, you know, maybe courses in you know how to become vegan, you know. People are nervous. Gee, they were always told to eat this other food their whole lives. And, and, you know, their mother, you know, who they trusted, you know, said it was good for you. So then to find out that it's not, and then you hear all sorts of stories out there in the public about how you're missing something. And actually, I found I'm not missing anything. I mean, B12, you can take a little B12. But what I'm not missing is I'm not missing the, the guilt that I didn't recognize, that I wasn't even aware of completely. I'm not missing the cravings either because I used to have cravings for food because I wasn't giving myself whole food, nutritious food. And with veganism, you can be a junk food vegan, but if you really want to survive as a vegan, you, you, you have a tendency to eat legumes, rice, um, tofu, that kind of food. And I learned so much about cooking by taking this on, you know, and making really delicious foods that I would never have made before. I would have taken the easy way out, you know, or just order something, you know. And so it's given me that skill and I really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and you maintain your weight better too, because I was concerned about weight. Um, you know, yeah, you get, I'm a little overweight now, but you know, it'll go back. I know because with animal products, it was, I didn't have that much control over it. So I was always on a strict diet and, um, that's about it. Uh, so I come on over, come to Freedom Farms when it gets, uh, it's, it, you know, we've been building it and, and repairing some of the buildings and getting ready to have a real opening there and probably a celebration there, so, you know, within a few months or so. Wow, Marilyn, yeah. this is awesome. Thank you so much for introducing all of us to Freedom Farms and the animals there and the beauty and also the 
um, really inventive ideas that you have for the, the site and how there may be a vegan center there at some point, which is um, really wonderful and, and needed in the community. So, yes, especially there in central California, it's halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. Perfect location. Yeah, halfway. So we do have some people here who are um, part of IDA and we're really eager to hear if you have any questions. This is an, an open opportunity to, to ask questions and Marilyn can, can help answer some of them about Freedom Farms um, or about some of the, the ideas that she mentioned. I have a question. <clears throat> sure, sure. This is Say Leonard your name. Rang Leonard Rangel. Hello, Leonard. I've been uh, a member with IDA for lots of, I don't know how many years, I forgot. But I also a huge uh, donor to HSUS and IFON and SPCA LA. I'm in Los Angeles. Um, this is more of a, of a concern for members. I see a lot of initiatives go through uh, your organization to sign this bill, sign that bill, um, and so forth, uh, especially for the mistreatment of animals. But throughout the years, I always wonder what ever happened? What was the end result? Mm. Because I, I've never, never, I'm yet to see, and this, I'm, I'm not, putting anybody in an awkward position, but it's just, I seem time and time again, I'm filling out these forms and saying, yes, put this person to jail. What he did to, to an animal was horrible. Um, it's not healthy. We don't need that in society. We need to take a strong stand. Mm -hmm. um, animals are not disposable objects that you can mistreat and so forth. Mm -hmm. But after signing everything, and I get this repeatedly through your organization, I don't what was the end result? <laughs> I mean, I that's never very, hear a follow. That's a good point. That's a very yeah. good point to bring. I'll, I'll, um, I'll answer that question. So thank you so much. I'm the campaign's director, as I mentioned, with In Defense of Animals. And it's a really good question. We um, do try to put together blogs about the results of those. So when we do ask for people to sign these, uh, what we call alerts, we follow up with a blog and we try to keep track of everything and send a blog. So if you read all of our blogs, you may get the information that you're seeking, which is what happened, what was the results. And sometimes we report on them really good news and sometimes not so good news. If, mm -hmm. if we didn't get the, um, the charges, uh, the maximum charges that we were requesting, if it was a justice for animals type of alert, um, but other times it might be a legislative alert where the bill does pass and we get to share like the victory with everybody in a blog. So if you stay tuned to our e-news and also look at our Facebook page, you probably will see the results of, of some of those um, alerts that we ask you to sign. It would probably be ideal um, because a lot of people use the email as a channel of communication for the most critical issues that we are challenged with, especially the ones that are very shocking horrific and detrimental, which they all are, but I'm sure there, there are severities of each one of them, would be ideal to send an email, say, okay, this is a high priority. I know a lot of you members are anxious to fall, find out what actually happened because everybody's busy in our lives, but we leave it to your efforts to research it and bring back to us and say via by email, this is what your signatures support it and this is what it resolved. Yes. And so yes, that's that's what we are doing. We we send our our blogs that we write every week in our e news. So if you stay tuned to our our weekly e news that comes out on Friday, mm. that's where you'll get that information. Like we'll let you know that this initiative that we were working on, uh, what happened with it, or uh, we'll let you know in our in our blogs. So those alerts when you sign them, there's often in the same email some blogs, and those mm -hmm. ones will tell you like what happened in previous uh, alerts that you signed. So that's a really good way. And also we could maybe initiate some, some uh, what we call individual messages um, if we didn't get to, to report on it in a blog, but we usually do try to do that. Okay, that's, okay. that's news to me. I, I didn't know we had one, so um, it's something overlooked. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure, yeah, no problem.
No problem. It's just in, in the e-news. So when you see it, you'll see those alerts. And if you continue looking down, you'll see all of the articles that we submitted. And usually a couple of them are about what happened previously. What are the results of those? But I am so glad that you mentioned that because we are um, really wanting to get the word out about everything that we ask our supporters to do. Um, and that's good news to us <laughs> that uh, you want to hear about it. And that's why we're here today is to really hear from everybody and to, to have this great conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much, Leonard. <laughs> Right. So let's see if we have anyone else who might have a question. You can either let us know, just like Leonard did. You can either raise your hand if you're in this Zoom with us. Oh, here's Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. Hi, Flora. And hi, Marilyn. Good hi, to see Jeffrey. you. Hi, Jeffrey. Good to see you. <laughs> um, is there going to be a hotel or bed and breakfast there? Because it would be a great place to stop when you're driving from Southern California to, to Northern Carol California, just to stay there for a day. Yeah, absolutely. We're thinking of making the uh, main house into, uh, into like a bread and breakfast. Yeah. Great. There will be. Yes, there will that, be. <laughs> that would be great. V yeah. Visiting the grandchildren, that'll be Good place to stop. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's a, it's just so picturesque there, and it has a magical quality to it. Probably also from the Hollywood part to um, to they wanted to get away from Hollywood, but <laughs> there, there's a lot of the memorabilia there. But it was their way of really relaxing. So it's interesting as well as. Uh, very, um, very calming and uh, very beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of wild uh, deer there and all sorts of animals, birds galore. Mm -hmm. So we'll look forward to uh, maybe seeing you at the, uh, <laughs> and when we open it up. Yeah. Did I say hello, Floor, or hello, Lisa? I meant to say hello, Lisa. I don't know what I said. Get in the hole. Okay. No worries. <laughs> Great to see you both. So nice to see you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for your question. And, and that's a big part of what we're doing is we're going to move into that direction where people can come and stay there and they can stop by and meet the animals and, and also come to these um, workshops and retreats. Yeah. You know, a place yeah. where you can put it all together. You know, you can from the diet to the animals to n learning about nutrition and and maybe uh, how to keep yourself healthy as you age. And having a place to to visit that's really beautiful and it's a getaway for, for people as well. Yeah, good. Great idea. No, thanks. Thanks, Jeffrey. We hope to see. I can't you believe it's it's actually happening. <laughs> you have a, a kernel of an idea. Why don't they have this somewhere? And then before you know it, you're there. Yeah, you know? yeah and you know, uh, making it a sanctuary um, is is really important. Yeah. Um, you know the the ponies from the pony ride in Griffith Park. Yeah, I don't know if they found a place for them yet, but oh, we uh, they have they have. Okay, <laughs> we checked good. into it. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah. but I I just spent a a whole week in Utah at best friends, so mm -hmm. you can always yes. uh, connect with them as well. Yeah, your yours will be a lot closer. And on near main highways. So. Oh yeah, have you ever been to Kana uh, Kanab? Kana I have not. I, oh I, my I, God, it's a tr it's a, it's a whole day of of travel. You know, it's yeah. a difficult travel because in the middle of no, it's on the southern. It's in southern Utah. You know, near the Arizona border. It's actually mm -hmm. near Zion. Very beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Who's calling? I'm, you know, I get all these spam calls. Do you get those too? 
Thank you so yes. much everybody, for your question. And looks like we have a couple others. So we'll okay. go in and see what other people have to say. Thank Anab you. That is amazing. Yeah. I hear from Scott Young to everyone. Yes, it is really amazing. It's hard to get to, but it's well worth the trip. Hi, Stephanie, wondering if you Gorgeous. might want to ask your question. Yeah, good evening, y'all. Um, I was wondering, is the farm going to be set up as a separate entity from IDA for donation purposes? Um, no, it's just going to be another project that we have. It's just, so we know? have sanctuaries in different parts of the world. We have sanctuaries already, and they're part of IDA. This person is just not going to stop. I'm going to have to turn them off. Um, and they're all part of the saying, it's all part of our mission, which is okay. to, um, for Say the you want to make a special donation to go to Freedom Farms. How would you do that? If you already give monthly, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, you could probably do that. You just have to notify somebody about that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Bob might be able to answer that. Bob, question. yeah. They yeah hey, if, 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 some, if you wish to make a special gift for, for Freedom Farms, just just send the check or whatever and note that in, in the gift and, and we will apply it accordingly. Okay. All right. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your question and also to Bob for your answer. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And just trying to see if we have any other questions. Look like there was an, any other hands raised. And if not, oh, it looks like Kathleen. So I'll go ahead and and add you here. Oh, um, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. <laughs> I, I hear uh, you fine. This is fabulous. Uh, who's taking care of the animals? I assume they're volunteers and... Um, no, you know. actually, they're paid to take care of them. Um, we have people that have been taking care of them from the time before I bought them, and we just continued with that crew. Oh, that's wonderful, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? So this continuity. Yeah. Okay. I'm learning about cows and, you know, all sorts of things that I wasn't raised around, you know, how you need to uh, contact the furrier, you know, and, you know, just mm -hmm. what they eat and everything like that. It's a real eye opener for me. The furrier, that's the, uh, the people who care for their hooves and uh, their hooves. No, those are the people that repair their hooves. Oh, the okay. Bar a barrier, I think. Barrier. Is that right, barrier? Mm -hmm. Furrier. Oh, no, we don't want to. <laughs> it's not barrier, barrier, I think. Okay, thank you. Oh, good to hear there's continuity about the care. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was so lucky. I, I you know, when I took this on, I go, oh, my goodness, how am I going to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm from East Meadow, Long Island, you know. <laughs> um, I never really met a cow up close, you know. Not that I didn't want to, but I never did. And, uh, and it, but we have a good board too. And one of my board members is a contractor. So he's been leading, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, construction and the renovation there and everything like that and taking care of things on the property. So it's been working out. We're still looking for a, a ranch manager um, and I have to start interviewing people, but it's, it's been working. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. And that's what I wanted to know well so far. Thank oh, well, thank, thank you for you. your question. Really appreciate that. Yeah, and we do have some, um, uh, one of the board members is giving some some advice to the existing people who are already there to in terms of how to manage it. There so. was a little question that came up here. Something about yeah. biting nails. Okay, so <laughs> the... Um, again, yeah, you can put your question uh, if right. you'd like. And um, okay, maybe Mary, if you see any questions you would like for us to answer in the chat box. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any yet, but I did want to add to uh, the answer to Leonard's question. Um, I recently started working with Doll to make sure we're tracking really well the different stories that we have and what's happening case wise like contacting the courts and asking like what happened at this meeting that that or the hearing or trial or whatever it was that occurred and, and following up with that 
and making sure we have all of those line items like up to date. And once we finally have an answer of like something happened, there was like a ruling, then we can get back to you guys and tell you what happened. So I'm working on that with with Dahl Stanley, our campaigner. So yes, and Dahl is our campaigner for our Justice for Animals campaign. And so some of the alerts that you read often if they involve animal cruelty and we're pressing the district attorney to um, um, go ahead and prosecute those cases, those are the ones that Mary's talking about and where you'll find the, once all the, the information is collected, then Mary and Thal will create a blog with the, the results. And those you can find in our e-news. So if you stay tuned to our weekly email, then you'll see the, the answers that you're looking for there. Thank you so much, Mary, for clarifying. And Hopefully, so eventually, someday, when they finally <laughs> get to it. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, that's I, part of, that's part of what happens is the answers, they may not happen right away. It's usually yeah. many months because the court dates get changed yeah, and postponed, and then it takes a while. But eventually, we will get the information and make sure that, that everybody does know about it. Yeah, thank you. So you know, we write in, too, and ask. You know, sure. Yeah, anybody's welcome to write us an email just by sending it to info at idausa.org. And we will forward those along to the campaigners and I'll make sure that, that you get some answer. <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, my philosophy is non judgment uh, with everybody you know, unless they're doing something so illegal or something that's hurting some creature. Uh, we, I try to meet that person where they're at and try to go from there rather than forcing them into whatever it is, uh, you know, whatever the, uh, the issue is. Um, and so uh, that's our philosophy. And, uh, you know, not to say that, um, you know, demonstrating and in your face stuff that ha that has purpose but uh basically our niche is really that we try to have a harmonious uh working place that's nonviolent and that uh, and that we so that we can get things done <laughs> if you're arguing all the time and fighting between the between activists you can't get things done and uh, it only creates a lot of hostility. And then you, you have other people complaining. So there's enough of that that goes on in our world. And we want to, uh, we want to create a place that's collaborative and communicative. So, and I think we're pretty good at it. We're, not, we're getting better. <laughs> yes, yes, we're getting better and better. There better. is a question here for you, Marilyn. Um, have you been in touch with loving Farm Animal Sanctuary in Paso Robles. Oh, Loving Farm in Paso Robles. I think so. Yeah, I think so. But I haven't visited it yet. I think we've been in contact by email. Who's who? Who's asked that question? That was um, Teresa Ryan. Who's? Oh, is that our Teresa? Um. Uh, no. Or a new Teresa. A new Teresa. Hi. We have our Teresa and then there's new Teresa. Um, I, I'm the one who asked the question. Um, I'm on the board of Loving Farm. Um, oh, and, and Loving Farm and Paso Robles and where Loving Farm is like is a stone's throw from Creston. So yeah, uh, we're very close. We're neighbors. I think that, you know, there is I, are you um do, are you a horse, mostly horse sanctuary? Oh, no, no. I'd say mostly. It has, I think it's another one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, it has pigs. They have two cows, turkeys. I think there's like 15 pigs now. Cows, turkeys, and they have a bed and breakfast as well. So probably um, a lot in common. Who is the uh, the uh, the, um, the head of that? Uh, Bill and Tracy Susie. Oh, yes. I've spoken to them on the phone. Oh, okay. Good. Yes. I just heard yes. about this yesterday, I, so I signed I, up. I, I, I was I, like. That's our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to them on the phone already, and we're planning to get together when I come there. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Sounds mm -hmm. like a lot in common. So. Yes, yes. And they're from LA, aren't they? They're. 
or they're from somewhere, but not in, the, in they weren't born there. They no, right, right. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember where they're from, but originally yeah. had a the sanctuary was up in the Bay Area, and then a few years ago moved down here to Paso Robles. Yeah, which yeah. Is where I am right now. Oh, you're in Paso Robles. Mm -hmm. ah, beautiful country, isn't it? Loving farms as opposed to loving arms in Erie, Colorado. Oh, it's loving L O V I N G farms. Okay, but, yeah. got it. Got the it. Loving, yeah. Anyway, well, glad to know you're in touch. <laughs> yeah, and I will uh, give them a call. Absolutely, yeah. when I'm up there I next. Look, I look forward to visiting someday too, since yeah, you'll be I right guess. here. I love you. I love people to visit. Really. Yeah. It sounds like come. a. Come it's a great opportunity to um, do some Airbnb hopping, you know, go yeah. from one to the other and kind of really have a little tour of animal sanctuaries in the area. There are, are, there, are there that many? There are a few. In the Paso Robles area, there's just Loving Farm for just like farm, farm animal sanctuary. And then there's a, um, there's a Mead Canine Rescue, which is... Um, older disabled dogs, mostly dogs, although they have a pig as well. Uh -huh. and, canine, so. and they're all right there in Creston. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. Creston's a cute town. <laughs> yeah. Four buildings. Four buildings. <laughs> Makes Paso Robles look like a big town. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a big city. You go out yeah. there yeah. in the big city. Well, I love Great. the Thai restaurant there, Basil. Basil Thai is good. Yes, you can get good vegan stuff there. Yeah, good stuff. Right. If you haven't been, there's a vegan cheese shop that is amazing. Oh, oh yeah, I've tried that. Yes. Really? I, I try yeah. not to eat cheese too much, but <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> it's really it's, it's, can you believe it? They have a vegan cheese shop there. It's amazing. Amazing. Just in this in that little in, in Paso Robles. The little town of Paso Robles. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, well, they, thanks, they need some more changing. vegan restaurants. So <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have a vegan yeah. fast food restaurant called yeah. Ziggy. That's it. I yeah. know. I had a bad experience there one time. Oh. <laughs> but it was they were giving away free food. So maybe that was it. You know, it was like a free tamales or something like uh, Oh, that was probably were... also right when they opened too. So maybe oh, some, okay. yeah. maybe some growing pains. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Growing pains. They're getting better, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look I'll forward to meeting you and, and touring. I'm glad to know you're in touch with with Bill and Tracy. That's good. Yes, I am. Thank you so much. This is wonderful yeah. to make these connections right here, and yeah, this you know in this meeting, it's just so wonderful. So hopefully there'll be some in person ones as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Teresa. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Wonderful. So we'll see if anyone else has any questions. We're getting towards the, the time that we'll be wrapping up. So if you do have a question, you haven't had a chance to ask it yet, you're welcome to raise your hand and do so, or you can type it into the chat so that we don't, don't miss something that was expressed. Yeah, I have a question for the, for the audience. Oh, you do? Well, what yes, maybe what I do. do. I mean, uh, is this something that is attractive, you know, this kind of environment that I'm describing to you? Is that something that you've ever, you know, it sounds good, sounds good to go to? Yeah. Getting some thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, just curious if anyone else if you want to either mention in the chat, if you like this idea, looks like thumbs Teresa, up. Teresa, okay. <laughs> Getting some thumbs up. Too. That's so great. All right. Well, that inspires me. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's a very um, innovative idea, Marilyn, to put together the sanctuary, but also this retreat center, vegan center, place to learn and advocate for, for the animals and also for our, our health and wellness. Yes. Thank you it's so much. It's all interconnected and all interrelated, and uh, we're not silos. We can't think of the animals as separate from us. No, we are so connected to all of this. And we're seeing it, it's getting played out in real time now. Yeah. So let's wake up. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. Take action and, uh, and make some changes in your life and spread the word to other people in a gentle, you know, hopeful way. Mm -hmm.
Well, I enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for those, those words of encouragement. And it sounds like people in the chat are saying they're looking forward to the grand opening. They're excited to, to visit. And they've always um, maybe been interested to hear more. And uh, this is great. Thank you so much to everybody for, for tuning in today. We're very grateful to you for your support. And we will continue to uh, let you know in different and more creative ways about what has happened in our campaigns. Um, so someone somebody wrote something suggestion. there. Somebody yeah. wrote something. I love your philosophy about uh, about trying to go vegetarian or vegan. Oh, that's from Kathleen Birch, and absolutely from Scott Young and Kathleen Kastner. We know her. She says thank you, Lisa and Marilyn. <laughs> oh. Absolutely, and. Wow, that's a hard job, I'm sure. Something L. L. Spencer says that. Uh, and then uh, Space uh, Stacy says, if anyone is in Las Vegas, I work with Hearts Alive Village. We do forensics on animal cruelty cases. Okay, and that's good to know. Thank you so much. I need to drop off. Someone had to drop off. Uh, areas do far more than trim hoofs. Oh yeah, they treat mm -hmm. disease, drain abscesses, and they. I watched a video showing a farrier making an artificial hoof for a cow who had lost part of theirs. There are some excellent YouTube videos on farriers. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Janet says cows like music. Oh yeah. Uh, does anyone play music to them? No, we're going to do that though. Absolutely, that's a good idea. I was surprised that cows are the way they are. You know, uh, when I, they just are so meditative when they're when they quiet down and they stop mooing, all of a sudden they just look at you and stare at you. Unmas, all of them. It's the most amazing thing. Who would have ever guessed? I bite my nails, Ginger. I don't trim them. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> well, you know, this is a lovely um, image to close I'm on. I'm in London, today. nearest yeah. airport, please, someone says. Yes, yes. So this idea of being in this meditative space with the cows is um, is a, a wonderful way to, to envision Freedom Farms. And that's really what we hope that you'll get an experience if you come visit um, once we have that, that opening. So really want to thank everybody today for joining us and special thanks to Marilyn for sharing the, the journey of how you started the Freedom Farms and, and also what's to come. Um, so just wanted to take a moment. We're going to... Um, we had so much participation in this. This is just yes. wonderful. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. So many, so many messages that we haven't read. But yes. um, oh, gonna... we've, been, we've been reading, we've had people responding, Mary and, and oh, Bob, yeah, to everybody. Oh, okay, so, yes, yes, it's all good. So, thanks everybody. We hope that you have a wonderful evening and stay tuned for our e news. You'll get more updates about what's happening at Freedom Farms, and also we will work on new ways to get the um, information to you about our alerts. Uh, somebody did mention sending specific emails to those people who signed those alerts and we can definitely do that as well. So thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Thank you, Marilyn, for sharing. Thank you so um, much. I'm so glad everyone was here. I'm just amazed. This is wonderful. I'd love to do it again. Fantastic. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening. Good night all. Good night.